Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I will lead you through how to set up and use GIS within DHIS2. So the process. There is a bit of a process uh, when it comes to GIS. We have to collect the shape files, which are files that represent or carry collection of coordinates. We have to import those um, GML files in a DHIS2 and then uh, use the GIS2 app in DHIS2. So we will collect the shape files, convert them to GML, then import the GML files into DHIS2, and then finally get to use that GIS app in DHIS2. And we'll go through that step by step. So step one, collecting the shape files. Uh, you're going to need the shape files for each org unit level in your instance of DHIS2. Uh, now a lot of uh, shape files are available from different countries and regions. We suggest going to gadm.org. You can click on the link on this page. Uh, but you might also have shape files for uh, your own uh, areas of um, uh, where you work for your own company. Uh, if you don't, we suggest gadm is a great place to start. And what you're going to have to do is save all of these shape files as GML files. And you're going to need to sh to save. Uh, one GML file for each org unit level. So what that looks like is you can see down at the bottom of the screen we have Canada and it's split up into provinces. So that province level would be one org unit level, uh, say provinces, and we would want to save that as a single GML file. We would also save a single GML file as all of Canada, as the entire um, shape, uh, and then we would save continuously more for each level we go down into regions, sectors, uh, whatever you've chosen in your instance. And the way to do that is those will just look like they will be called vector layers if you're using um, QGIS, which is what we suggest is an open source uh, software that allows you to view shapefiles and save them into GML. So step two, importing GML files into DHIS2. Now there is a little bit of code work that you have to do here. You don't have to understand everything, but you have to open up your GML files and shift them a little bit. So uh, we suggest that you just use Notepad. It's the built-in uh, Microsoft uh, editor. Uh, you can find and replace. Uh, it's not very complicated. Um, and just you're going to have to replace everything into org colon name and then the org unit name that you've chosen. As you can see here in the selected uh, photograph or the screenshot that I have. I have Ontario underscore NKS because it's my initials because I was just wanting to make sure in the training instance that I can isolate it as separate from anyone else who's been working. And then once you do that, you'll import it into DHIS2. And the next slide, I'll just show a very brief uh, walkthrough of how to do exactly what I'm talking about here. So we have downloaded our shapefile and exported it into a GML file. Uh, which I have here as one of our examples. Uh, and now the default way to open this would be through Notepad and Windows, but there are many open source uh, programs that you can edit code in and you'd be editing XML code. But uh, for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna be using Notepad. Uh, I've opened two versions of uh, two different GML files just to show you that uh, depending on where you got your shapefile from, you'll have different uh, codes that you'll be looking at. You don't need to understand all of it, um, but just to give you a sense of what you're trying to find and what you're trying to change here to make it connect with your org units in DHIS2. So the top right I have, uh, this is the CAN provinces. This is the one that I'm going to be uploading or have already uploaded. And you can see I'm going to select this line that I've changed into the proper one that I want to use. So it's OGR colon name. Uh, and then the name that I'm using for my org unit, I have underscore NKS, that's my initials, just because it's in uh, trading land, and then the uh, end tag. Uh, and you can see here in another example of um, GML file that I got from somewhere else, a different shape file, uh, you can see that these OGR tags are a little bit different, they're set up a little bit differently, but I can do it in the same way. I would just have to find and replace or manually change these to name. Um, I can also just add a line if I want, uh, and then just make sure that it's Ontario NKS, so that in here is the name of my org units, that I have this beginning code and the end code are name. And I can either change what's already there, or I can add it. 
uh, DHIS2 is only looking for this line and then the rest of it will be the coordinates. So whatever else you have in here is not really important for DHIS2's comprehension um, of the uploading these files. Once I do that, I'm going to pop over to um, DHIS2. I go into my import and export uh, app. And when I'm there, I select GML import. I'm going to see this screen, choose my file, Canada provinces. And then uh, we normally suggest you a dry run, or if you know exactly what you're doing, you can, uh, or once you've done your dry run, you can say no. I'm not going to show what that looks like because uh, Canada is a very large country, so it's going to take a long time to um, import. But uh, that is the process of making sure your GML file is going to connect to and be understood by your DHIS2 uh, instance. So now that you've uploaded successfully, uh, you're going to be wanting to go towards the screenshot that I see there, uh, where you actually are able to see your org units represented um, overlaid over a Google map, uh, which is built into GIS uh, and built into DHIS2. And you'll be able to have multiple layers. Uh, everything is going to be visualized through color. You can choose the colors and uh, DHIS2 will automatically choose the different scale of colors if you want. Here on the right side, I'm going to circle that. Um, so I've chosen the high and the low end, the green and the red, and DHIS2 has chosen the shades for me based on what data exists, so I can get a very clear sense. And in the next slide, I'll be showing you how to do that. All right, so now that we have successfully imported our GML file into DHIS2, we can go into our GIS app and see how that works. So it's just the map with the compass on it is the icon. And we're going to pull up a map of the world, which is based on Google Maps, I believe. So you can drag it around, you can zoom in and out. But the most important thing is that we want to make sure that we've selected the, that we have the proper stuff in here now. So uh, when we go to click our thematic layers, we can actually add information on top of them, uh, overlap information if we'd like. And of course, it's going to be displayed through colors. Uh, through our legend sets and you can overlap or stack these um, and change their opacity if you'd like. You can also of course include Google Streets or a hybrid of um, uh, satellite images from Google. So it's very very uh, powerful. Uh, at the moment we don't have anything selected so let's just select a one data element. Uh, we'll be doing one at a time. Um, we're going to just choose uh, food poisoning, which is something I just created for testing, and select a month that I've entered some dummy data into. Uh, we go into our uh, organization unit tree, and we just select some of the org units that uh, we want to see information for. I know I have data in these, so I will select those. And for the legend set, uh, it is automatic. You can choose an automatic or a predefined. So we're just going to do automatic now. And because it's food poisoning, low is actually a good thing. We're going to make that green, and high is a bad thing. So we're just going to swap that around and update. And what it'll do now is it'll show the data based on these, the data. It'll show the data in a color uh, for these organization units we've selected. And you'll see what that looks like in a second. So here we go. So we have uh, Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan, four provinces in Canada. and the, uh, we've only chosen two colors, so the um, system has actually chosen uh, what shades of colors to give uh, us as a visual representation based on how close it is to what we want. And we can get a breakdown here. We can see we actually only have one result one on each of these different stuff, so it's not a lot of data that we're looking at, but you can kind of get a sense of how this works. Uh, this is our legend set. These are the gradients, and we can see these gradients here. If we want to make it a little bit more opaque, um, say we know what these provinces are, we don't need to see it, we can make it kind of 100% opaque or we can pop it down to 50 and then we can actually see what's going on and this is good if we want to have multiple levels uh, layered on top of them. So that's a very basic overview of how to use GIS once everything's in. It's very simple to use, uh, very intuitive and you can add these layers on top of themselves and, and stack them. You can also change the colors and you can save these legends, um, if these legends, if you'd like, uh, as legend sets. Um, 
the legend sets, which you would create here by adding a new one, uh, this is what you would then choose in your pivot table to have a heat chart on your pivot table to color the cells based on the data. And that's how you use GIS. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 